Hey everyone, my name is Josh and welcome back to your fourth stimulus check and news update. Per usual, we have a lot to get into in today's update, but first, if you would like to receive two free stocks from Webull valued up to $2,300, make sure to claim them by clicking my link, which you'll find in the description box below. Okay, so jumping right into the update for today, I wanted to quickly answer one of the questions I received in a previous video, which was from Deaver. Deaver says, Good morning, Josh. I have a question. I didn't receive the second Golden State Stimulus Check of California this Friday. Do I need to apply for it? Okay, thank you so much for your question. And no, thankfully, you do not have to put in an application in order to receive this money. The only thing that's necessary in order to receive the second payment per the California government website is to file a 2020 tax return by October 15th of this year. You must also have an adjusted gross income of no higher than $75,000 for last year, 2020. Furthermore, of course, you must also be a resident of California for more than half of the 2020 year and also still be a California resident when the payments are issued. Finally, you must also not be claimed as a dependent by another taxpayer. Now, you should expect to receive this payment in the same way you receive your tax refund, whether that's a direct deposit or a check in the mail. Also, even though many California residents have already received their payment, it is expected that more will go out in two week intervals, so not everyone will receive the payments at the same time. Okay, so now that I have that question out of the way, which I do hope helped anyone still looking for their payment, I wanted to quickly dive into a couple of the bills currently heating up in Congress. The first being the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which is currently being held hostage by progressive Democrats. In their mind, the bipartisan infrastructure bill shouldn't pass until the much larger reconciliation one does. At the same time, modern Democrats, particularly Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, are holding the reconciliation bill hostage. Just recently, Joe Manchin called for Democrats to take a pause on all this extra spending until we can at least figure out if this inflation that has been taking place is transitory. Although this has been a cause for concern for those who favor this larger bill, one of President Biden's aides, Ron Klain, is not all that concerned. In fact, Ron Klain actually believes that Manchin can be persuaded. Take a listen. Dan, if I had a nickel for every time someone's told me this package has been dead, I would be a very, very rich person. It was dead back in May when there was initial opposition to it. It was dead in June, the day the president went to Europe. It was dead in July again. All I've heard is how this package is going to be dead. And yet, amazingly, it continues to advance. The bipartisan infrastructure plan passed the U.S. Senate and the House adopted a rule for its ultimate passage uh, later right. in September. But this is very and the, and the reconciliation bill, uh, right. the, 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 the reconciliation bill, both the House and Senate have adopted the budget structure to pass it, and the House is now in committee markups this week and next week. How to are pass you going it. to so convince look, Joe We're going to continue. We've worked with Senator Manchin at every step of the way. Uh, he's been a partner of our administration. He has strong views. Others have views. We're going to work together to find a way uh, to put together a package that can pass the House, that can pass the Senate, that can be put on the president's desk he, and signed into law. Is he convincible? I mean, you read that. He's very specific, saying that he's worried that that price tag or even something close to that is too uh, difficult to pass because of the, of the debt and even because of inflation. Is that yeah, so something I, so that's I think movable? that's why he's very. I think that's why he's very persuadable because, of course, this package adds nothing to the debt, nothing to the debt. It is fully paid for by raising taxes on wealthy people. We've had people become billionaires during the pandemic. Uh, they should pay their fair share of taxes. We've had 55 big corporations pay nothing, nothing in taxes, though they have record profits. If we raise taxes on the big corporations who aren't paying, uh, raise taxes on people using international loopholes, raise taxes on the wealthy who are not paying their fair share, we can pay for every one of those investments in the package without a penny of taxes on people making under $400,000 a year and without a penny being added to the long-term federal debt. In fact, passing these tax changes, making the people who aren't paying pay their fair share, collecting taxes from people who owe them and are dodging taxes by using loopholes, using lawyers and accountants, collecting those taxes will make our tax system fairer, make middle-class people share less of the burden, mm -hmm. and can help bring down our debt in the long run. So I think Senator Manchin's concerns about inflation, about debts, those are concerns we can address with the provisions of this package itself. So Klain says that their administration has worked with Manchin every step of the way. He doesn't believe 
even with Manchin representing one of the reddest states in the country, that he'll vote down this package. Klain was then asked, even though states are being given permission to extend the $300 plus up with money that they were given, not a single state has chosen to extend them. He's asked, why did President Biden let the benefits in so easily without putting up much of a fight? President Biden says the states can use their leftover stimulus funds to extend benefits on their own. But according to The Washington Post, states, no states actually, have indicated that they plan to do so. The Delta variant is wreaking havoc on the economy still. So why did the president made a, make a decision to just let these benefits expire and not push to extend them again? Well, Dana, the Congress, when they passed these benefits, set this as the expiration date. Right. And, uh, uh, and I would say the Delta variant is having an impact on the economy, but not so much on employment. Uh, we're at the lowest unemployment rate we have seen in this country in a year and a half, 5.2%. Uh, uh, we've added jobs every single month we've been here. And so we, uh, the states were given money as part of the rescue plan back in March to deal with the consequences of any economic dislocation due to COVID. States are using that money in different ways. Uh, one of those ways is uh, employment bonuses, paying people to take jobs. Uh, other states are providing employment training, employment counseling. So uh, the, these benefits expire under law uh, this week, this coming week. And uh, we uh, think that the states have the tools they need to uh, help people move uh, from unemployment to employment. Uh, particularly, by the way, we have more uh, unfilled jobs in this America, in this country, than at any time uh, on the record of measuring unfilled jobs. So we think yeah. the jobs are there, uh, and we think the states have the resources they need to move people uh, from unemployment to employment. So Klein believes that states have the tools to take their residents from their current unemployment status to being employed. Klain also mentions that there's more unfilled jobs right now in this country than there have been at any time. So the Biden administration believes fully that there are jobs out there and people shouldn't be receiving this extra money. So even though it's looking unlikely that the unemployment benefits will be extended, other benefits continue to be available. First off, there are still billions of dollars left in rental assistance and at the end of August, it was estimated that only around 11% of the funds were distributed, with thousands of people now facing eviction, applying for this aid and states getting it out in a timely manner, it's going to be extremely crucial. Just recently, New York went ahead and extended the eviction moratorium in their state through January 15th of next year, which should give people a few more months to receive this assistance. Also, in exactly one week from today, those of you with children should be receiving the third round of enhanced child tax credit payments. Just as a refresher, you should be receiving $300 for each child you have under the age of six, who will still be under the age of six at the end of this year. Then, for those of you with kids under the age of 18, who will still be 17 on December 31st of this year, you'll be receiving $250 per child. Previously, if you recall, this credit was only for $2,000 per year in previous years, so if they do end up extending this credit in the reconciliation bill, parents will receive a boost of either $1,000 or $1,600, depending on the age of their children. Finally, for those of you eligible for SNAP benefits, you should see around a $36 bump in your monthly benefits, which will be taking place on the 1st of October. So on that note, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Again, if you would like to receive a couple free socks from Weeble, make sure to quickly claim them by clicking my link, which you'll find in the description box below. To receive the first free stock, you will need to fully open an account. Then to receive the second free stock, which will be valued up to $2,000, you'll need to make a qualifying deposit of at least $5. And even if you aren't all that interesting in investing or continue to invest at this point in time, you can always sell the free stocks that you receive and transfer that money, however much they're worth, right back to your bank account. So free stocks or free money is completely up to you. So once again, I hope everyone has a great rest of their day and I'll see you in the next video.